Autumn. Autumn in Scotland marks the last chance for the angler to get out and catch a fish before winter comes. And it is, in my humble opinion, the finest time of the year to be outside in the country I call home. It's a great time of year to be on the water as well, although many disagree with me. Lots of folk don't like fishing at this time of year. The fish, although now in the rivers in numbers, have lost their silver sheen from early in the year and people go from calling them words like fresh and gleaming to slightly derogatory terms like old, dirty and tired. I think it's a shame. Sure, they take on some very different characteristics, but they're still salmon. What these folks miss out on, though, is a well-noted phenomenon that seems to only happen in the autumn when the rivers start to rise. This time of year seems to be the best time to catch a truly big fish, as seen by the fact that both British record fish have been caught in October. Big male fish preparing for spawning with big kipes and a bad attitude, affectionately known as crocodiles. That is what fishing in October is all about. So just as the leaves start to fall and the evenings begin to cool, those of us that know head out in search of big beasties. We're not just looking for any old salmon, oh no. We're fishing for crocodiles. I head out in search of one of these big brutes every year. It's become a bit of a tradition. It's a bit of a fool's errand going after a big salmon, but the thrill is in the chase, as they say. And you also have to be in it to win it. They say that too. This past October, I headed out to fish three rivers in three days in search of monsters with my good pal, Lana Richardson. The following is an account of our trip. Uh, today we're on the River Deveron. It took us about two hours drive to get here. A um, couple of stops on the way for you know, essentials, sausage roll. We're seeing some really big crocodiles jumping about, some really big fish, so feeling pretty hopeful that we're going to bump into one. So yeah, but we'll see how we get on. When fishing in the autumn, you can be faced with pretty much any possible fishing scenario you might imagine. It might be snowing, you might be on spring tactics, or the river might be on its bones and you could be on summer tactics. Luckily for us, the morning that we fished was calm and mild, and there'd been a frost the night before. A frost at this time of year really gets the fish going, so I was feeling pretty optimistic when Lana started on the first pool of the day. It didn't take her long. I hear there's much nicer. <laughs> yeah. We'll probably go back quite quick. Like all good fishing days, it was gone too fast. It's one of the great philosophical truths of our time. Never does time go quicker than when you're hauling them in. And never does it go slower than when you're filling in your tax return. I'm not sure that's an actual phrase, but you know what I mean. Anyway, we'd had a classic autumn day, action in almost every pool, with three fish returned and a few others lost. Nothing massive, but all very welcome, and it seemed like an inevitability that we'd bump into a big one somewhere over the next few days. It's amazing the confidence catching a fish on the first day can give you. We fished until the gloaming, 
landing the last fish of the day just as the sun was throwing the last rays of sunlight down the river and the cold creeping in behind it. It was going to be another cold night, an exciting prospect. Time to head up the road, further north and onto the next river. Day two on the River Glass. The River Glass is the main tributary of the River Bewley, a famous and very well known hydro river located on the east coast of the Highlands. I'll be honest though, I'd never heard of the glass before Lana invited me up to fish it. Which feels a little embarrassing as I live not too far from here and have fished the area for years. But on the flip side, it's nice to find out about a new river especially one that flows through such a beautiful part of the world as this one does. Plus, being a tributary, we were there at the right time. The fishing doesn't really get going until the back end. And I knew the Bewley had some really big fish in it. And yet again, it didn't take Lana long to get the action started. So here we are, searching for crocs in the north of Scotland on the beautiful River Glass. On the beautiful River Glass. It's now about four o'clock, we've been fishing all day. And um, we've had fish, we've both had a fish. I just had a little croc there. Um, Lana had a fish as well. Um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's been really great. But we didn't find a big one. It's hard to be disappointed when you're catching fish. And as I said before, setting out to catch a big salmon is somewhat of a fool's errand, seeing as how you can't specifically target big salmon. But I couldn't shake this nagging feeling we were doing something wrong. We were seeing them, we were seeing a lot of big fish, but we hadn't connected with any. The day was gone again, and we tackled down in the dark in silence, both quietly thinking about what we could do differently tomorrow. It is uh, six in the morning and I'm up very early to go to the River Ness. This is the last chance of the year, of the season, um, to catch a salmon. So um, myself, like many others in Scotland, are making the most of it. Gonna go out and try and catch a fish. Not only a fish, this is the time of year when uh, some of the biggest fish of the year are caught. So. So that's what we're all hoping for. It's very early. So I am... Um so I've just arrived at uh, Dock 4, which is the last beat on the Ness before Loch Ness, um, right up in the Highlands of Scotland, a uh, very famous and well-known part of the world, obviously, with there being a monster. Um, but we're here for different monsters today. The, um, the River Ness is well known for big salmon, 
and uh, it's often at this time of year, right at the end of the season, where these big salmon get caught. So that's what we're here for today. We're going to try and catch one of these big crocs. Uh, Lana is coming to join me. We're going to have a crack at it, try and hook into one of these big boys today. It's time to get tackled up. So uh, it's lunch time and we've had a pretty good morning. Um, I had a nice henfish, about 10 pounds. Kit, we're using a Red Francis, which is a pretty popular autumn fly and uh, very successful, just something about it this time of year. It seems to work really, really well. I'm using my classic reel and my uh, Loop ZT today, travel rod, the 14 foot nine weight. I've got a um, triple density line with a, a 12 foot poly leader, fast sync poly leader on the end of it. So um, we're getting down. We're not dredging, we're not right on the bottom, but we're, we're getting down. Yeah, they're, they're, they're down a little bit. Um, so yeah, weather's starting to turn a bit now. It is October and it is the Highlands of Scotland. So the weather's uh, constantly in flux at this time of year. But yeah, so we've got a bit of weather coming in. It's not as nice as it was in the morning. But we'll plug away and uh, see what happens for the rest of the day. There it was. 
was a real life autumn crocodile, laid in the net in all its glory. Not going to give Miss Ballantyne or Tiny Morrison a run for their money, sure, but it was a proper fish and one of Lana's best ever. And I don't know how many times I've set out with the idea that I'd make a fishing film and the thing I wanted to happen never does happen. But this time it did happen. Well, you had a croc. Mm -hmm. Really good day. My first big croc. Dark, massive, big kite. Yeah, awesome. Well done. Thank you. And I was really glad that it was Lana that got this one. Well, I say really glad. I was quite glad. I wouldn't have mind catching it myself.